Hello, I'm Elif and this is a recap for episode 117 of the series For My Family, 24 hours after Turkey and before dubbed for TV. Asiya is shocked upon seeing the video of Susan's death and immediately rushes off to tell Omar. Ayaz, seeing her worried and upset, follows her and assures her he'll accompany her to the bus station and won't leave her alone. However, the man who had killed someone in front of Ayaz and Asiya a few days earlier blocks their path and points his gun at them. Ayaz steps in front of the bullet and says, Asiya, go, he gets shot twice, and the man shoots at Asiya as well. They both fall to the ground, and Ayaz calls out to Asiya until he loses consciousness. Isla is leaving when Gukhan arrives with his friend and says, I can't bear the accusations anymore. My friend has come to tell everything, the man denies the incident, which happened years ago, and the accusations against Bark and Gukhan's plan. And says Gukhan has repented and hasn't gambled in years. Isla is stunned by their lies and curses Gukhan. Bark asks Isla, could you have misunderstood? Gukhan looks at Isla with a smile. Asiya and Ayaz are in the operating room, and everyone is waiting for them at the hospital. Shortly after, the doctor announces that Ayaz is in stable condition and will regain consciousness soon. Asiya's surgery was successful, but because the bullet was close to her heart, she has been transferred to the intensive care unit for observation. Omar goes to Ayaz's room to find out what happened to Asiya, and Ayaz tells him everything, saying, I shouldn't have listened to Asiya. I should have told you everything. Everyone is waiting behind the glass in Asiya's room for her to wake up. Shortly after, Asiya opens her eyes, smiles at her family, and waves to them. Everyone feels relieved. Meanwhile, Arkif is talking to Saraya on the phone, and Saraya says they won't talk to Arkif when Asiya regains consciousness and tells everything to the police, only he will go to prison. Arkif says, we are destined together now, but only if Asiya regains consciousness. I'm okay with going to prison. Meanwhile, Saraya confesses that she becomes more dependent on Arkif every day and feels better with him. Arkif says, so from now on, officially, you're my girlfriend. Suddenly, Asiya's heart stops, shocking everyone. The doctor intervenes immediately and tries to revive Asiya, but fails. Asiya dies. Everyone stares in disbelief at her, who moments ago was looking at them. Omar and Emal enter the room and remove the white sheet from Asiya's face, asking her not to leave them alone. But they take Asiya away, and Omar and Emal cry bitterly behind their sister's back. Ibiku washes Asiya's body alone, recalling their memories and dreams. She tells Asiya, didn't you promise you wouldn't leave me alone? They bury her. Her death is bitter and unbelievable for everyone. When Omar and Orhan are alone at the grave, Omar says, I'll find whoever did this. Orhan pleads with him not to do it and to think about Emal. At Gukhan's club, he approaches Isla and rudely tells her, it's busy today. Instead of sitting idle, help the waiters. Isla, with anger, says, I'm the manager here. I didn't come here to be a waitress. Gukhan says, whether you accept it or not, I'm your boss. I pay your salary. They argue again about Bark, and Isla leaves angrily. The kids go to school and as soon as Omar enters, he feels suffocated seeing Asiya's empty seat and goes to the courtyard. Ayaz sits next to him and offers his condolences. Omar says he must find Asiya's killer. Ayaz shares the information he got from the lawyer with Omar and tells him he's been monitoring the killer's whereabouts for a few days. He tells Omar, I'm by your side, Omar. In class, when Saap and Lydia offer condolences to Omar, Ibiku angrily says, there's no need to pretend to be good people. You didn't like Asiya. Susan tells Saap, you threw Asiya in jail. Saap responds, that's no reason not to be upset. Yuljan adds, you must be really upset. They get into an argument. Omar intervenes, telling Saap to stop, and says, enough. At that moment, the principal arrives and asks Omar to calm down. Omar says, my sister is dead. What are you saying? I want to burn the world down. The principal says, if doing that brings your sister back, let's all do it together. At least, show some respect for Asiya's memory. Arkif goes to the club, sits next to Saraya, and consoles her. Meanwhile, Nabahat arrives, and Arkif embraces her. Sacrifices are made. Saraya looks at them enviously. Nabahat tells Arkif they should go on a trip for a few days to change their mood, and Arkif agrees immediately. Cheval goes shopping with Orhan and decides to buy him a suit. When Orhan puts on the suit, Cheval compliments him and says, let me see. Wow, it looks great. You're handsome too. Yasmin approaches Omar and hands him a book that Asiya lent her last week, saying, there's a note inside. Omar cries upon seeing the drink recipe that Asiya wrote for him. Yasmin, with tears, says, I made it for you. 
I'm your sister too. Omar sips the drink, and Yasmin hugs him. Arkif brings flowers for Soraya, who tells him, take them, give them to your wife. Arkif asks, are you jealous? Don't be like this. I'm trying to fix everything. And he wins Soraya's heart. The restaurant where Asiya's killer works needs a waiter, and Ayaz takes Omar there, where Omar starts working that same night. Isla tells Nabahat about Gukan's story, and Nabahat reproaches her for not recording Gukan's voice and suggests she trick Gukan into confessing and recording his voice. Isla sits next to Gukan and tells him she has decided to reconcile with Bark for the sake of peace. She says, I admit my mistakes, but you should too. You lost Bark's money in gambling. Then you lied to him. Gukan admits, I made a big mistake, giving Bark to you. When he realizes Isla is recording his voice, he angrily snatches the phone from her hand and says. Did you think you could trick me? Don't do this again. Omar has the restaurant staff under surveillance and realizes that their boss is hiding somewhere and planning to escape soon. When one of the staff members goes out to give the man his passport, Omar and Ayaz pursue him. Orhan goes shopping and a woman with a suitcase approaches him. Orhan, upon seeing her, says, Aiton. Aiton greets him with a smile. Aiton and Orhan had a brief relationship years ago, but they separated when Orhan went to military service. Aiton tells Orhan about her life and how she married a man who had two children. She was pregnant herself at the time of the marriage and agreed with her husband to keep this matter between themselves. Years later, Aiton's husband becomes ill, and at the same time, her daughter, Jansu, finds out that Mustafa is not her real father, causing turmoil and leading to her separation from her husband. Orhan asks, so, have you found your daughter's father now? Aiton replies, yes. He's sitting right in front of me. Orhan is shocked, and Aiton, with a smile, says, you're Jansu's father. Asiyah's friends gather to celebrate Emal's birthday and read aloud the answers Asiyah gave in Yuljan's beliefs book, tearfully reminiscing about her. Asiyah has talked about her siblings everywhere and expressed her wishes for them. Omar and Ayaz reach the killer's hideout, but after entering the house, Omar closes the door in front of Ayaz and says, This is my business. Omar brutally beats the man and takes out a knife from the table to stab him in the heart. But then, he sees Asiya in front of him. Asiya says, Don't do it, Omar. Don't leave Emal alone. Didn't we promise each other this? We were supposed to stay alive for Emal. I beg you. Emal is waiting for you now. The sound of police sirens is heard. Omar hugs Asiya and says, I couldn't take care of you. Don't go. Asiya says, Take care of Emal. Give her a bright future. I love you both very much. Omar lies on the ground, crying, and keeps saying under his breath, don't go. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for the next episode.